opponents. Uh, uh, Duquesne was able to beat Frazier this year while uh, Riverview was victorious over Duquesne. Um, Carmichael's another common opponent. Frazier beat them by one point. Riverview easily rolled over them. Um, I believe those are the only two on the schedule. But uh, Frazier, Joe, you look at uh, they've got some size. Uh, their offensive line averages 230 pounds per player and that kind of takes, uh, you know, it catches your eye when you look at a stat like that. Caught my eye. Who said, heck, I'm only 170 pounds. Rich Walsh, he says, I prefer them bigger anyway because they tire faster. So uh, he may have something there. Frazier does have some unusual offensive formations, and that's kind of uh, got Jake Kappa concerned. Uh, uh, their junior quarterback, Greg Abel, is responsible for two-thirds of his team's touchdowns. He ran for 14 and threw for another 11. So out of the 34 uh, times they have crossed the goal line, he has been responsible for 25 of them. Well, trick plays, Bob, you know, just reminds me, trickery generally gets you into a carnival. I don't think it gets you into a championship uh, uh, series. To you by True Value Hardware. True Value, the official hardware store of the NFL. And help? Well, help is just around the corner at your local thrift value. That's True Value Hardware Store. Getting back to uh, the quarterback here for Carmichael, for the, uh, I should say, Frazier. Uh, looking across the field, they are a team that sports red and white. Uh, Abel has completed 82 of 173 passes, 714 yards. Their leading receiver is a fellow by the name of Brian Banish. 27 receptions, 385 yards, three scores. Orlando Balasario, on the other hand, has completed uh, only 31, but he's only thrown 60, Joe. 714 yards, six touchdowns, so Frazier is a team that's going to put the ball in the air this afternoon. They've lost four games, and obviously they've had to throw to try to get into the end zone. The Riverview, on the other hand, uh, has had things pretty much thrown only when they had to, and they haven't had to very often this year. And when they do throw, they uh, were talking about uh, Frazier, they do throw the ball deep. Uh, they can. And the quarterback, who's only a junior, as we had mentioned, uh, Greg Abel, can throw on the run. So we're going to look at some fancy formations here. The rain continues to fall. If you look out at the, uh, the bleacher sections here, uh, umbrellas are up everywhere. And this is one of those stadiums where they stand, as they do in most places, all around uh, the fenced-off area. And that's going to be uh, prevalent throughout the game. Abel is also Frazier's top rusher, I might add. Here's the quarterback who with 543 yards leads the team in rushing. And one of the running backs, uh, George McGavitt, averaging 8.9 per carry, is right behind him with 524, and he has scored five touchdowns. I talked to Randy Gilbert uh, earlier, Joe, and uh, he is still, uh, you know, he's got the arm in the sling, and he says, you know, I, I'm, I'm hoping uh, that if we make it down to three rivers, or I should say, <laughs> that he'll be able to play. But when he separated his shoulder, Joe, it was a bad separation. Well, and that happened right here, the game that we carried. Yeah, right. I remember it. Uh, you know, hopefully uh, he'll be okay. And if he makes the game, fine. If the Raiders get there, and if he doesn't, that's fine too because he's got a lot of football left in him. That's for sure. They had a graphic up on the screen, Joe, that I kind of glossed uh, over. It really didn't get into the Riverview side. I was uh, on my way. So, guys, if you want to throw it back up there as we watch the Raiders come onto the field. Uh, Abel, their leading rusher, as we had mentioned, 543 yards right behind McGavitt at 524 for the Raiders. Heakins, uh, who's putting in his first year yeah, here. He's the workhorse. At Riverview with 803. And uh, Fritz Tamburo, who kind of slid into this position when Daper went down with that bad ankle at 442. Check the average on both uh, Heakins and yeah. Tamburo. Well, look look up look top with other Frazier. Guy. That's right. Yeah, so, anyway, it's uh, this is going to be a battle here today, folks. That's uh, for sure. But again, we've got uh, confidence in the race went out. I should, know what should, you're going should, to say. Should be easy. <laughs> should be easy. Then all of this is hype. No, I, no. Can no, I no. throw this out the no, window? No, 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 no. No, you're 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 quoting stats. You're you're quoting numbers that are accurate. All right, let's take a break. <laughs> Joe and I will be right back. Stay tuned. There's more coming up.
Flips the coin. Frazier has won the toss. On crutches out there, Steve Dapra for Riverview. So Frazier winning the toss, and Riverview will defend the goal to our left. The pregame show has been brought to you by Thrift True Value Hardware. Joe, do you have the officials? All right. Well, if we get a uh, look at them on the screen there, we'll run them by you. Well, some familiar names out there. The referee is Bob Mervis, the umpire Dave Ratone, Mike Jarosinski is the linesman, the line judge Bob Bakewell, and Mike Horan is the field judge. A crew, Bob, that, uh, well, actually, uh, not the crew together, but we've seen these guys, and you know what? I got to believe we're going to have a much better game than we had last night from the official standpoint. <clears throat> All right, you guys let me know when you want to run down the... Uh all right the Raiders setting up the ball as Orlando Belisario will kick off and back to receive Brian Bandish who wears number two and number seven is George McGavitt one of the uh, one of their leading rushers and Belisario So let's see how this one develops. Frazier in the white with a red trim and Riverview in the all black. The kick fielded by George McGavitt and McGavitt up the far side and the last man He's to get gone. him. The last man to get him is going to be Ertlejack if he can catch him and he does. He brings him down all the way inside the 10 yard line. Well, he actually, they're gonna spot it at about the 11, Bob. Boy. Boy, oh boy. McGavitt takes the kick. It is not particularly long. It came inside, and he came very close to touching uh, the the uh, turf with his knee. And that was short of the 20. Here he is at the 30, 35, 40. There's Belisario on the chase, getting bumped out of there. Ertlejack, and Ertlejack puts on the afterburners. He'll catch up with him. There's the 30. And he's uh, up with him down to the 11-yard line. So here is Frazier. Moving the football around the left side. Tackle made by Tamburo. And carrying the ball was George McGavitt. Let's take a look at Frazier's offense. Uh, the line with uh, Chris Barber, Brian Usher, Dan Torres, R.J. DeRucci, Greg Winslow, and the tight end, Eric Kara. In the backfield, Greg Abel, the quarterback, McGavitt, and uh, Shaporka, and Brian Salisbury will carry the football. The wide out is Brian Bandish. Second down. And a man in motion, and he's looking to throw, and the football is dropped by Chris Nichols. Let's take a look at the Raider defense. The defensive line with T.J. Skillen, Justin Papa, Theo Fakaris, and Kaleo Siora. Also, Zach Rimsick, Justin Dujak, Rich Walsh, Fritz Tamburo, Fran Schulo, and the safeties, Ben Erdeljack and Orlando Balasario. Third down and 11 coming up after the incompletion. Eric Kara flanked to the right side and Brian Bandish to the left side. And a man in motion. They're looking to throw. They fire to the end zone. Way high. Incomplete. He was triple teamed in the end zone. I can't remember Good. the game last year, Bob, but when Ertl Jack ran down a player similar to what we have seen here. Right. It turned that thing around, and it's very possible that they stopped the touchdown on that play by uh, Erdeljack. So on fourth and 11, it'll be Josh Miller attempting the field goal, and Eric Kara will hold the ball at about the 18. It's a 28-yard kick. And the kick is through the uprights, and Frazier has taken a 3-0 lead. We'll return to Riverside Park in Oakmont after this. Say, if you've been turned down for credit toward the car that you want, call AA Motors, where you'll find a great selection of quality pre-owned vehicles. And there's got to be one to fit your budget at AA Motors, located at the corner of Allegheny River Boulevard at Plum Street 
Cone 828 1617. That's AA Motors AA. And the phone number again is 828 1617. And the kick is short. Picked up at about the 26. That's uh, Damien Heekins with the football. And he'll be wrestled down at about the 28 yard line. And the tackle made by Roy Elliott on the play. Heekins running to the left side meets the resistance here. And uh, brought down at the 20, well, let's call it the 27 yard line. So the Raiders with their hands on the football for the first time today, and it goes to a Tamburo. Tamburo hit up near the 30. Here's the Raiders offense for the game this afternoon. Keola Ciora, Theo Ficaris at center, Ron Zanella, Rich Walsh, Justin Pappa, and the tight end is Mark Bonarotti. Orlando Belisario is the quarterback. The fullback is Damian Heekins. The running backs, Fritz Tamburo and Fran Shulo, and the white out is Ben Erdeljack. And you'll also see uh, some play today. Well, let's let's get back to things here. Second down and eight after the two-yard gain up to the 30-yard line. And here is uh, Tamburo one more time. And again, it was Elliott who made the tackle up near the 34-yard line. So Elliott on his uh, defensive play, mark it at the 34. Here's the defense for Frazier. It's Andy Pellick, Josh Miller, R.J. Drucci, Brian Usher, and Tom Shanefelter. And the linebackers, Lynch, Hoff, and Salisbury. The cornerbacks are Dan Shaporka and Ray Elliott in the state. The safety is Chris Nichols. Third down for the Raiders and about three to go. Three nothing, Frazier in the lead on the field goal. Of about 28 yards. Second effort may Got it. have gotten the Raiders a first down. Damian Heekins carries the football straight ahead. Met by Tom Schoenfelder. Second effort, as we had mentioned, up to the 38 or 39 yard line. And the Raiders with their first first down of the game. And they trail in this one three to nothing. I don't know how many games that they have played this year where they may have started out trailing in the ball game. This has got to be one of the few. The only one George or one other? One other game? Here's the snap and the give goes oh, around to oh, Jack. Jack around the left side and is hit hard as he crosses the 50 but picks up another first down. Greg Pike makes the play and uh, watch Hurdle Jack on the give and these jersey numbers are going to become a little bit more obscure as the game goes along. Nice uh, nice play by Greg Pike defensively, but a first down for the Raiders at the Frazier 49. Tamburo the tailback. Heekins the fullback. Heekins gets the call straight up the middle, and he runs over. One man, uh, Chris Nichols, although Nichols was able to hang on for the tackle. And another first down at the 39, although the, well, they are. They're going to give it to him. Thought they were going to bring the chains out to measure, but uh, they has the first down at about the 39. Bonarotti out to the left side. Tim Bureau, the tailback. Heekins, no, the fake. Balisario keeps the football off the right side. Go! Still on his feet. Heekins is inside the 10-yard line at about the 9. He picked up 30 yards. I'm sorry, Balisario picked up 30 yards on that carry. Balisario holding on to the football. Nice block on the play by Todd Pavlik. And finally, the tackle made by Eric Kara. So it's first and goal. If somebody uh, bumps something on the hits, it's a tremendously cloudy game. Sorry for doing it on the air, but first down and goal from the nine yard line. Here's Heekins straight up the middle. Heekins drives, 
touchdown. And he's in for the touchdown. And the Raiders have taken the lead. Watch on the replay. The hole's open. Good block over there by Rich Walsh. Walsh was the guy that said the bigger they are, the you know he likes it better that way. They'll so fire quicker. Huh? Hekins is in for the score, and it's a six to three game. The Raiders in the lead. Hurdle Jack holds for Balasario's kick. Perfect snap. Good blocking. The kick is good, and the Raiders have taken a seven to three lead. Here in the opening quarter, we'll be back with more right after this. The Riverview Raiders have accomplished what very few other high school football teams have duplicated, a perfect 10-0 regular season. It's been a great season for head coach Jay Kappa and his Raiders. Saxon Associates of Verona recognizes the tremendous effort put forth by Riverview in achieving a perfect season so far. Best wishes to the team and congratulations from Saxon Associates, Verona. There are the, the deep backs, Brian Bandish for one and George McGavitt the other. The Raider drive of 72 yards in seven plays and eight up three minutes and 41 seconds of the clock. There's McGavitt again around the right side. McGavitt looking for blocking, runs into his own man and really met, I don't know if it was Kevin Beard or Gene Smith. Maybe it was T.J. Skillen. McGavitt. That was 62, that was T.J. Skillen. So the football Joe spotted at the 23 yard line. And quarterback George Abel will look to throw. His team down 7-3, throws on the run, and it is caught by Brian Bandish. And Boy, it is a first down for about 15 yards. Three black jerseys there. Looked like it might be intercepted, but uh, they caught it. Orlando Belisario makes the defensive play, and Frazier is in business at their own 38. Riverview seven, Frazier three, first quarter. There's the option play, and around the side goes George Abel. Make that Greg Abel, Fran Shula makes the stop. Here's the replay. Now Abel starting in motion. That's uh, Greg Abel. Gain of uh, six on the play, second and four. At the 43-yard line, Abel looking to throw. He fires and tipped, and Belisario makes the interception. Intercepted. He's at the 37, up to the 50, 45-40. The blocking's in front of him. And will be brought down at about the 24-yard line by George McGavitt. The ball tipped right into the fingertips of Balisario. Hot potato here. Watch his mom. That's pretty tough to say. Maybe we can catch the number on the way back. They're saying Shulo tipped the football. And Balisario heads on back. But there was a penalty flag on the play the penalty flag was thrown at the 41 yard line let's see if it was uh, Shulo indeed who tipped the football and the penalty from the 41 will take it back to the 26 it may have been Justin Dujak uh, who tipped the football Nonetheless, it's a first and 10 for the Raiders. However, the penalty takes it back to the Riverview 26-yard line. So here are the Raiders 
leading seven to three. And it goes to Heakins. Bill Lynch defensively there for Frazier. Have no idea. It is second down and ten. There was no gain on the play. Tam Bureau is the uh, tailback in the eye. There's a short pass to Ertljack, and the ball dropped. Just off the fingertips of Ertljack. Third and ten. Perhaps another passing play for Riverview. Balasari on the draw to uh, Tam Bureau at the 35. He's at the 40. And dragged down at about the 43. Has the first down by a good six, seven yards. Tackle made by Dan Shaporka. And a first down. Reaching out was Roy Elliott. And finally, Dan Shaporka makes the play. First down at the 44-yard line. Riverview 7, Frazier 3. Late first quarter, by the way. Once again out of the eye, Belisario to throw it first down. Hit from the blind side as he lets it go. And it is caught by Bonarotti, but his knee went down at the 36. But a Raider first down on the play. Great concentration there, Bob. He uh, went down on one knee, got it, and... Then looked upfield, but it was too late. His knee had already touched the ground. And you saw that he was also hit as he threw the football. First down for the Raiders at the Frazier 35. Riverview in the lead, 7-3. to three. Option play. Balasario one more time. Keeps the football. Is at the 25-yard line. And finally dropped on the play by Roy Elliott and Bill Lynch. Gain of about, uh, as you watch the blocking, the, the Raiders open the hole and then clog things up so that the, they just can't get back on track. They need about a foot for a first down, Bob. So they're just a little bit shy. They've got to get to the 25, and it looks like about the 25 and a half yard line. So officially, I guess we could say it's second and one. And straight ahead goes Balasario for the first down. State Representative Frank Dermody recognizes the importance of high school athletics and the role that it plays in helping to develop those who participate both mentally and physically. Frank Dermody congratulates the undefeated Rearview Raiders and wishes them well in the playoffs. State Representative Frank Dermody proud to assist in helping to sponsor today's telecast. First down for the Raiders on that carry. It's at the Frazier 23. Here's Ertljack around the left side. Ertljack 15, 10, cuts inside. Bye bye. He's in. And a touchdown for Ertljack. Ertljack carried by Rich Walsh just for the exercise. Ertljack, good block by Walsh, and then he runs into the end zone to pick up Ertljack. Carry him around for a while. And there it is. So it's a 13-3 game. And the kick by Balasario is good. So the Raiders have now taken a 14-3 lead on that play. Yeah, go ahead. 14-3. 
here in the opening quarter, and the Raiders have scored their second touchdown of the uh, of the ball game. Here's a Riverview Raider pizza special from Valtry's Pizza in Oakmont. Get two large plain pizzas at only $9.99. You heard me right. Two large plain pizzas from Valtry's Pizza for only $9.99. There are no coupons to clip. You only have to call or stop in to pick them up. Two large plain pizzas at $9.99 at Valtry's Pizza. 848 Allegheny River Boulevard in Oakmont. And the number to call, 828-1421. Valtry's Pizza in Oakmont. Here's the kick by Balisario. Sailing down and right through the hands and all the way down to about the one. Picked up by McGavitt. Looking for running room and then he's going to be stood up by Calio Ciora and dropped inside the 15. Boy, McGavitt is having his trouble today, huh? Total yardage so far in this ball game, uh, Frazier with 18 and Riverview with 146. Here's McGavitt right there at the 10. Slips a little bit and boom, the big hit by Ciora. Greg Abel takes the snap and hands to the first man and McGavitt. Rich Walsh, who made the tackle, as uh, you saw on the screen, looked like he had taken it away, but apparently the whistle had blown. So there was no gain on the play. Second and 10 from the 13-yard line. Official timeout. We had mentioned earlier the winner of this game next uh, weekend will play the winner of Manesson and Duquesne. Second and 10. Abel looks to throw. Their team down 14 3. Pass is incomplete. Oh, he got it. He well, got one it. official signaled an incompletion, and the other signals a catch. And it's uh, a completed pass. Here's Abel again. Throwing the football, and it is caught at about the 29-yard line. Who'd you give the reception to? I was wondering if, uh, okay, was Eric Kara number 11, first down for the Commodores of Frazier. Abel on the draw, loose football, finally picked up. Frazier holds on, but again, Joe, looked like Kaleo Ciora was in very quickly. So they lose a little yardage on this one. And Steve Mitchell making the defensive play for the Raiders. They lose three, second and 13 from about the 26. Second down, 13. What is it with the whistle? That's all, the end of the first quarter. I'll go along with that one. It's bound to end sometime. So we have played one, and the Raiders have the lead by a score of 14 to 3. We'll be back right after this. Fourteen three, the Raiders in the lead. All right, ready to go here in quarter number two as uh, the Raiders fell behind three to nothing, but that didn't last very long. As uh, Riverview came back with a couple of quick touchdowns and lead fourteen to three. Balisario, three carries for forty two yards. Erdeljack had a couple of carries for thirty one yards. Or I should say 35 yards. So 
So uh, Frazier set to go now with uh, Greg Abel. Lone setback. They've got a wide out to the far side. Here's a fake pitch out kept by Abel. He's going to be hit and dropped across the 30 as he gets to about the 33. Shulo making the stop at about the 33 yard line. A pick of about oh, almost five yards. Give him a four yard gain. Third down in about six. Dreary day here at Riverside Park, uh, but it did not keep the crowd away. They're here, umbrellas and all. Third down, six for Frazier at their own 33 yard line. Here's Abel rolling left, looking, looking, throwing, and it's going to be broken up nicely over there by Orlando Balisario. Balisario played that very nicely, laid back just uh, in time to. Uh, Look as though the receiver was open, but he closed quickly and broke it up. Fourth down. Looked at the uh, coaching staff of the Commodores, and they were looking for an interference play on Balisario. Tamburo and Ertl Jack back deep for the Raiders at about the 35-yard line, their own 35. There's a kick, short kick. It's going to be picked up by Tamburo. He goes to the outside, picks up a couple of blockers, still on his feet at the 40, the 50. Tamburo is going to go bye-bye. He does. Good night and no flag. I think that's about a 62-yard return. I think he picked that one up at about the 38-yard line and went 62 yards for the touchdown. So Tamburo. Showed some speed there. I'll tell you what, he uh, he just handled himself there, waiting for a few blockers. He got them, and then it was all she wrote. So Belisario will get set for the extra point try. They're that muddy part of the field. High snap. Ertl Jack controlled it. Now he's going to throw, or is he? Yeah, he throws it, and it's going to be... Incomplete, went clean out of the end line, but uh, well, he did the next best thing. Couldn't put it down for a kick, tried to throw it into the end zone, incomplete. The score is going to remain at 20 to 3 in favor of the Raiders, and here is that high snap. Ertl Jack was able to uh, control the ball, but that was about all. He couldn't do anything through the ball and figured he might find somebody in the end zone. He and he didn't. almost did. Yeah, right. <laughs> so that fell incomplete. The score remains 20 to 3 in favor of the Raiders. You know, there's nothing perfect in this world, and Bill Dixon is fixing just about anything electronic that goes sour. TV repair, video recorders, microwave ovens, and more. So if what you have needs fixing, come to Bill Dixon at Bill Dixon TV, 806 Allegheny River Boulevard in Oakmont, and the number to call for Bill Dixon is 828-2347, 828 Two, three, four, seven. All right, Balisario getting set to kick it off. And there is the kick. Taken at about the 15-yard line, and down goes the ball carrier. That is, uh, I think it's uh, Dan Shaporka or Tom Schattenfelder. Shane Felder, that is, number 22. Ball is spotted near the 30-yard line, so Frazier will have it first and 10 from their own 30. They trail 20 to 3 here in the second quarter that shows 10 and a half minutes remaining. And Joe Riverview came into the game as the single A top seed. Well, with a 10-0 record, I'll tell you what, Aaron, there's a pretty good trap there, and they get it. Well, they pick up good yardage as they cross the 35 up to about the 38. Yeah. And uh, that is, uh, yeah, Dan Shaporka. Shulo drove him out of bounds, but they picked up about uh, almost eight yards on the carry. Joe, I hesitated in picking out a number. I thought it could have been a 28. 
but the, well, uh, the that numbers, mud on the numbers, so the it's numbers are going to be awfully hard to pick up the rest of the way with that mud out on the field. So you'll have to bear with us. Abel is set now as they need uh, two and a half yards. Oh, and Abel got the bad snap there, and well, actually, uh, he got the snap and then slipped out of his hand. He fell on the ball at the 30. So the yardage that they picked up on that last play, they almost lost all of it on that particular play. So it's third and nine. Ball near the 31-yard line. Now they have to throw. And here's a handoff, and boy, that one went absolutely nowhere. Big number 74 was there, along with uh, number 62. Papa was there. McGavitt. T.J. Skillen helped Pappen out to make that stop. So, again, the uh, dynamic duo back there for the Raiders. Ertl Jack and Tamburo. Boy, the... They did a number on that last punt. High snap. Oh, look at Papa get that one. <laughs> Line drive kick. The Jason Papa cradled at about the 27-yard line. <laughs> Joe, the quarterback, uh, Greg Abel. High takes snap, and look at this kick. Line drive. Oh, now watch Papa. <laughs> so the Raiders. The only sour note, there was no return on that uh, that punt, by the way, was a minus one. Well, we I was ready to say minus two. We'll settle for that. All right, Raiders with the ball. And Belisario keeps and lost his footing. It is a miserable, miserable day here at Riverside Park, weather-wise, that is. Brian Salisbury there for the stop. Gene Kelly would have a picnic here this afternoon. Second quarter, it's uh, we're what, 20 to 3. We're approaching eight minutes remaining here in the first half. 20 to 3 in favor of the Raiders. They have it second down and about nine. Handoff going through there and getting up near the 21 yard line. Elliott made the stop on Tamburo. Flag on the play. Might be a hold or, a, well, blocking below the knees. So that'll go against the Raiders, and they'll march off the yardage. So they'll bring it uh, all the way back to the 40, almost the 42 yard line. So it's second down, they gotta get to Verona for a first down, Bob. Second down and long, Belisario ready. Back he goes, looking, looking, throwing. He's got a man out there, complete to Ertl Jack. And Ertl Jack breaks a tackle, and he's going into the end zone for the touchdown. Oh, my goodness. I'll tell you what, there will be no overtime today, Bob. Well, I wasn't looking forward to the overtime anyway. No, I know you weren't. <laughs> nice catch by Ertl Jack as he leaped high into the air and shrugged the tackler at the 23, and then it was solid footing. Well, probably uh, the Riverview team either watched that game last night in person or on Channel 3, and they probably thought to themselves, we don't want any of this. <laughs> so they have made sure so far they're out front 26-3. to three. As they get set for the extra point, they're going to go for two. They're going for two. Balisario back, rolling right, looking, looking, throwing, and it is good. Two-pointer is good to Bonarotti, Mark Bonarotti for the deuce, 
and the Raiders lead it 28 to 3. We'll be back with more championship football right after this. All right, we're back, and uh, this one looks as exactly the way the experts had it figured. 28 to 3, the Raiders on top. And uh, we still have seven and a half minutes remaining in the first half. Balisario getting set. And there is the kick. And this one is back down to about the 10 yard line. And that is Brian Bandis. And he is going to be hit and dropped at about the 23 yard line by Mike Catullo. Mike Catullo on the stop at the 23 yard line is where they'll spot it. First and 10, Frazier from the 23 yard line. 28 to three. Is, is this a quiet crowd or what? Very quiet. Well, you're not, no, no, no noise at a ball game. Well, no noise makers. Well, no noise makers, no 50-50. I'm surprised they let you come in to watch the game. There's a pass complete, and out of bounds was uh, George McGavitt. Pass from Abel, picks up about five or six yards. Let's give him a five-yard gain, call it second and five. The ball at about the 27 to 28-yard line. Pretty hard to see the markers. The field is, uh, in certain sections, it's uh, pretty muddy. Second down, five yards to go. Spread out all over the place. Abel, straight back, looking, throwing, long pass. He's got a man out there, and there's a flag. Yeah, yeah, they, they, they caught they caught Balisario there. He did a little grabbing, but the pass was complete. Catch the replay. It might look a little bit different here, right? So a, an interference call against the Raiders. Well, you didn't get a chance to see it there because the play, I mean, the infraction, if there was any, uh, occurred before we caught the receiver there on the screen. In any event, it is a uh, first down, should be. So they decline the penalty, take the first down all the way up to the 46 yard line. First and 10, Frazier in possession from their own 46 yard line. 642 remaining here in the first half. Abel sends Nichols in motion, long pass might be intercepted. And it was tipped over there. I think uh, I think number 24 there, with Fran Shula was there and tipped it. Incomplete pass, second and 10. Well, there were three black jerseys there. Belisario was also there. He was the one that tipped it, Joe. Was he the one that tipped it? I thought it was Shula. All right. Fumble, Abel picks it up, and then he's stopped. He loses four or five yards. 62 there. I think it was uh, T.J. Skillen, Justin Papa also there. Well, they lose four on the play, third and 14 coming up. Long yardage here coming up, third down and long. Ball is spotted at about the 43-yard line. Frazier. Shotgun this time. And here's the shovel pass. And it's complete and still going, still going. And this guy's going to go all the way. He's going to go all the way. George McGavitt. 
Oh, my. George McGavitt took that shovel pass and went to the sideline over to the far side, down the sideline, into the end zone for the score. How about that? That's about 58 yards. Well, from the 42 or 3, it's uh, 50, well, 56, 57. And there he goes. Zrimzek made a dive at him there, but couldn't couldn't connect. So it's uh, Frazier going for two. It's 28 to nine. Wide on both sides. Here is Abel looking, throwing, and it's incomplete. It's actually intercepted, so it's incomplete. And that was uh, Zrimzek there on the coverage. He actually intercepted it, but it really didn't matter. So it's 28 to 9 in favor of the Raiders. We'll be right back. Come to Sivas in Oakmont and take advantage of their full service salon. Pedicures are given with the Eurofoot Spa. Sivas also offers full body waxing, facials, manicures, electrolysis, and of course the most stylish of perms and cuts. Cut your hair, coloring time in half with their new Italian color system. Holiday gift giving can include a gift certificate from Sivas. They're located at 759 Allegheny Avenue, in Oakmont. That's Sivas in Oakmont. Onside kick, and uh, the onside kick was, I believe, recovered by number 62 for the Raiders. I believe that was T.J. Skillen, if I'm not mistaken. There is an offside against Frazier. Well, if there's an offside and, uh, and the Raiders recovered, why, why don't why, you have the option? Huh? Why don't uh, Why don't they take the ball? Well, why would they march off five yards when uh, when they they recovered uh, it? I just don't understand that play. Again, the Raiders leading at twenty-eight to nine. Well, I'd like to find out uh, what happened there. There is the kick this time long. It's going to be taken by Shulo. Shulo at the 40. Shulo at the 45 and run out of bounds at about the 47-yard line. And uh, run out of bounds by Dan Shaporka. Eric uh, Kara also there. So they'll spot the ball at the 47-yard line where the Raiders will have it first and 10. Under five and a half minutes remaining. Is it my imagination or is this a real long first half? All right, here we go. Balisario. Hands off. He can Still going, Heakins all the way to the 38-yard line. Well, make the 37-yard line of Frazier. Boy, if Heakins, he broke through there, and then finally Eric Kara had to put the stop on him at the 37-yard line. So a big gainer that time for uh, Damian Heakins. His old team won last night. Heakins, you know, came uh, to Riverview. Uh, he spent, uh, well, the last few years up at Burrell. From one winter to another one. Another handoff. Still going, still going up across the 30 to about the 29-yard line. That was Heakins one more time. Joe, the numbers are getting tough to yes, read. they are. It's Ron Zanella setting up a good block. T.J. Skillen. They made the play happen. Second down and about two. Second down and two, the ball at the inside the 30-yard line. About four and a half minutes left of the first half, as you see. Here is uh, Balisario, keeps, and uh, they went for the pitch man. Balisario kept it, and he went all the way down inside the 15-yard line. Now they spotted at the 15. Eric Kara came up to make the stop. 
So another good gainer that time for Balisario. And on both occasions that he made good gains on that play, they covered the pitch man, but uh, they forgot to go after the quarterback. And uh, Balisario made good yardage on both occasions. This time he's down to the 15-yard line off Frazier. First and 10 for the Raiders. 350 remaining in the first half. 28 to 9 in favor of Riverview. There's a pass and complete. <laughs> I think it's Rimsick, number six. I think it was Rimsick. Was <laughs> now watch Belisario. It looks as though he's just, look at this one. <laughs> <laughs> Like he why, was are holding, we, why are we laughing? He, Joe, he, he like, completed it. It was like he was holding a pack of mud. That's probably what it felt like, but in any event, it is a first down at the five-yard line. First and goal for the Raiders at the Frazier five-yard line. Hikas and Tamburo in the eye as Balisario. Bark signals, Hikas, touchdown! Damian Heakins off the left side for the touchdown. Boy, they sure do make it look easy. Mm. Well, all the pregame information that I put together, Joe, I should have just thrown it out the yep. window, signed on before kickoff, <laughs> and said this is going to be a walk. All right, here's Belisario trying the kick. Oh, look at that one. See the way that ball, see the ball fell? I'll tell you, Ertl Jack had that ball spotted, and by the time uh, Belisario went to kick it, it just fell over, and here it is. Take a look at it right there. <laughs> well, in any event, the score remains 34-9 to in favor of the Raiders. Well, if you're a do-it-yourselfer, you know what a dirty shirt is all about. You're the kind of a person who knows what it takes to get a job done. And Eilers Hardware in Verona caters to the do-it-yourselfer, that guy with the dirty shirt, as well as commercial hardware needs. Eilers stands for service, quality, and competitive prices. So, Eilers, the dirty shirt hardware store located at 318 Center Avenue in Verona, invite you to stop by come in wearing a dirty shirt <laughs> we don't <laughs> they don't care well i'll tell you what the people out there performing this afternoon are going to be with dirty jerseys that's for sure boy it sure is muddy out there the umbrellas are still up it's that kind of a drizzle that uh, you have a hard time getting comfortable all right here's a kick by balisario it's taken at about the 35 yard line and down at the 38 and uh, numbers are almost impossible to pick up. The, we did get uh, Jason Anderson for the Raiders to make the tackle on Roy Elliott. So it'll be first and 10 for Frazier from their own 37-yard line. Believe it or not, in the whole game, only one turnover. Right, with uh, the conditions being what they are, we're inside three minutes remaining here in the first half. Abel barking signals, straight back he goes, looking, looking, throwing over the middle, complete at the 40, the 45, and down at the 45-yard line. And I believe that was number seven, George McGavitt. Shulo in on the stop. Uh, Papa was there, a couple of other black jerseys. So it's a pretty decent game there. They spot the ball up near the 45. Second down and uh, almost three yards to go. Abel sends a man in motion. Back, looking, 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 throwing, and this is going to go out of bounds. In fact, it was intercepted. Walsh, I think that was Walsh. Yeah, I think it was. Rich Walsh had that one intercepted, but he... Caught the ball out of bounds, but they did have terrific coverage on that play. The intended receiver was Eric Kara. So it'll bring up a third down and three. All 
right, ready to go here as the clock shows a minute 55 remaining in the half. And here's the option around the left side and, and Greg Abel uh, unable to do anything there as uh, about five or six black jerseys. Dujak, Shula. So the Commodores will go into punt formation here as we're down inside a minute and a half remaining. No flags? I guess not. Taken by Erdeljack, and he's down at the 26-yard line. So Erdeljack took that punt and was stopped at the 26-yard line. The clock shows a minute 14 remaining in the first half. And the official, uh, well, there are flags all over the place. Now they're throwing the flags now. Well, that too many, too many men on the field. Well, I was going to say, if we need a break, uh, do you want to do it now? Good uh, opportunity. We'll take a break and be right back. Don't go away. All right, the football is going to be marked at the 40. And a penalty against the Raiders. Too many men on the field, so it'll be first and 10. Frazier at the Riverview 40. Back goes Abel, looking over the middle. It's complete. And up to about the 31-yard line was the receiver. And, uh, well, the number is almost impossible to pick up. Shapurka. Dan Shapurka was the uh, receiver, and a timeout is called by Frazier with 53 seconds remaining in the first half. Well, if you've been turned down for credit toward the car that you were looking at, call AA Motors, where you'll find a great selection of quality pre-owned vehicles, and they're located in Oakmont. And there's got to be one to fit your budget. AA Motors at the corner of Allegheny River Boulevard and Plum Street, Phone 828-1617. That's AA Motor Cars at 828-1617. Joe, a reminder for the viewing audience, uh, should the Raiders win, of course, our plans are to continue our coverage of Riverview football in weekend number two. Is the game still in doubt, is it, Bob? Said if. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, uh, we certainly will be on the scene, hopefully, with... Uh, our two local teams in the running. Burl uh, won last night in, uh, well, overtime fashion. Three time. And uh, the Raiders are here trying to do the same thing, not in overtime, of course, but right now they're comfortable with a 34 to 9 lead with uh, 53 seconds remaining in the first half. There is Abel throwing a long pass, might be intercepted, almost intercepted by Belisario, but it's incomplete. Third down and a yard to go. Intended for Brian Bandish. Let's take another look at this uh, pass here that Belisario almost intercepted. He had this one under control all the way, and right there, he almost had it. All right, ready once again. There is a draw right up the middle, and... I don't know. He's not going to make the first down. McGavitt, he's going to be short. Fourth down. Dujak led the defensive charge for the Raiders. He had some help. So it's fourth down, and uh, Frazier takes another timeout with 25 seconds remaining in the first half. I would, uh, I would imagine, Bob, that the game next week involving uh, Riverview will be on a Saturday. I doubt they'll let them play with only six days. Right. I think we had talked about that before. In fact, all four of the quarterfinal games are being played on a Saturday the first weekend. No, I was thinking about next No, Saturday. I know, I know. But I'm saying all, all teams involved would probably play next Saturday. Right. Okay. 
Burrow, on the other hand, will probably play next Friday night. And as Bob mentioned and I've mentioned, uh, Comcast Cable will be on the scene uh, for both games involving both of our local teams. And Joe, isn't it, uh, wasn't it mentioned here in the booth that for, for whatever reason, Butler will not host the Burrow right. game next Friday night? Right, which is good news to us. The, uh, the the field. remodeling they're remodeling the field and it's not uh, it, it's not playable so uh, uh, we we won't be going to Butler of course with our luck they'll probably send us to Newcastle <laughs> all right we're ready to go fourth down Frazier they need a yard Abel back looking throws a long pass. And this one was almost intercepted. It falls incomplete. The Raiders will take over. They'll probably kneel down here with 20 seconds remaining in the half. Raiders will get the ball first down. 20 seconds So there's the incomplete pass. So it's the Raiders taking over possession now at their own 31 yard line. And they'll probably just, uh, you know, Take one snap, and that'll be it for the first half, and the Raiders will go into the dressing room with a 34-9 to lead, and I would uh, think that would be pretty comfortable. Balisario kneels down, and that will end the first half, so at the halftime, it's uh, the Raiders 34 and Frazier 9. And we'll be back to uh, check in with the Riverview Band at the half right after this. We're at halftime, and the Riverview Raiders have a commanding lead of 34-9 to nine at the half. Let's take a look at stats, and here's Mike Pavlik. Okay, Bob, thanks a lot. And uh, the first half stats are heavily weighted in favor of the Raiders, as you would expect. Uh, First downs, 12 to 5. Uh, rushing yards is huge in favor of Riverview, 165 to 8. Uh, 3 for 4 passing for the Raiders, 7 for 15 for Frazier. And uh, Frazier's out past the Raiders, 126-73. Net yards, 238 Raiders, 134 Commodores. And the one turnover was Abel's pass interception, and Riverview ended up scoring a touchdown on it. Individual stats here in the first half. Uh, Greg Abel, the quarterback for uh, Frazier, 7 out of 15. 126 yards and one interception. George McGavitt's carried the ball four times for minus four, and Dan Shaporka carried it one time for eight. And then uh, Riverview's just stuffed the uh, running game of Frazier so far. A big day for Orlando Belisario in the first half. Three for four passing, 73 yards, and he's rushed the ball six times for 55. So he's had a, uh, a big afternoon here in the Raiders' final home game of the year. Damian Heakins, six carries, 46 yards. Fritz Tamburo, three carries, 25. Ben Erdeljack, two carries, 35. And receiving, uh, Orlando spread it around a little bit. Ben Erdeljack caught one for 42 in the touchdown. Mark Bonarotti caught one for 21. And Zach Zrimzik caught one for 10. And the sc scoring uh, here in the first half for Frazier after uh, their long kickoff return on the opening kickoff by McGavitt, Josh Miller, uh, connected on a 28-yard field goal, and it was three to, no three to nothing for Frazier. At 7.08 of the first quarter, the Raiders came right back. Heakins on a nine-yard run. Belisario added the kick. It was 7-3, and then with 2.14 left in the quarter, Erdeljack on a 23-yard run. Belisario's kick was good, and it was 14-3. Fritz Tamburo uh, returned a punt 63 yards for a touchdown then in the second quarter. Uh, they botched the extra point. They tried to pass. It was no good. It was 20-3. And then Earl Jack on a 42-yard pass from Belisario. And Belisario hit Bonarotti on the two-point conversion, 28-3. Frazier came back to score a touchdown, their only touchdown of the half, on McGavitt's 57-yard shovel pass from Abel. The uh, pass for two points was no good. It was 28-9. And then Heakins capped it off with 3.11 to go in the half on a 15-yard run. The kick was blocked. Hide the women and children. Riverview 34, Frazier 9. Women and children out first. <laughs> huh? Are you? Uh, uh, yeah, first and, and only as a matter. Yeah, it's. Uh, and I'll tell you something. I was out there at halftime, and how these people are even able to stand up out there is beyond me because it's like a skating rink. 
and it's the grass is low and the mud is and, and the, the mud is just so slippery and it's raining so hard that there are, there are people falling all over the place out there and I, they must be wearing like the 14 inch cleats because there's there's no way that and and the just the fact that they're able to make it look like a, re a representative football game is pretty amazing. Okay, we're going to head for the uh, second half momentarily. And uh, again, Bob Tattern with Joe Falsetti and Mike Pavlik at Riverside Park. Second half action coming up. What you bring... Back at halftime, the Riverview Raiders leading it 34 to 9. Frazier with a touchdown uh, without an extra point, preceded by a field goal. In fact, Frazier scored first. They had a, oh, about an 80 yard return on the opening kickoff and uh, had to settle for three. And then Riverview came right back, touchdown after touchdown after touchdown. And Frazier will kick off. Well, it skipped through a couple of guys. Ooh, Frazier doing a super job covering. And for Riverview, Jason Anderson fell on the football. So Riverview will have a first and 10 at their own 36-yard line as we start the second half. Heakins gets the call, and Heakins sheds a tackler, cuts here to the near side, and is dropped for a loss on the play. And there's Heakins. Uh, Heakins might... Uh, well, he's off the field, I believe. No, no, that was no. Uh, Shula that came off. Heakins is still in there. Heakins is uh, favoring a leg anyway. Tamburo and Heakins are the two setbacks behind Balisario. Heakins, uh, well, here's Balisario passing. Bonarotti is out there. However, it is intercepted. And uh, Heakins makes the tackle as Dan Shaporka makes the interception out at around the midfield line, and it was Heakins who came back to make the interception. Bonarotti was the intended receiver. There's the pass, and picked off just short as Bonarotti tried to make the tackle, and here's Heakins coming in to make the defensive play, and the football is marked at the Raider 49. Greg Abel looks to throw, has the screen to McGavitt. Here's McGavitt at the 35. He's gone. At the 30. He's gone. He's gone. So McGavitt goes in for the touchdown of 49 yards on the screen pass. Well, it's not really a screen, I guess. Oh, I get, well, it is. Oh, a little swing pass to the left side. He'll pick up all kind of blockers on this side, and then that's it. And he pulls away. The Raiders just can't get trapped. We just wanted on a dry field, not to make any excuses if they could make uh, the cuts any better. But uh, there he is, McGavitt going in for the six. Going so, for two. 34 to 15, the score. Abel Papa. could not make the pitch. And Justin Papa very quickly came in to make the defensive play. And so they don't get in. It's uh, 34 to 15. Hard to say what happened on that play. State Representative Frank Dermody recognizes the importance of high school athletics and the role it plays in helping to develop those who participate both mentally and physically. 
Frank Dermody congratulates the undefeated Riverview Raiders and wishes them well in the playoffs. State Representative Frank Dermody is proud to assist in helping to sponsor today's telecast. So it's Frazier kicking off. McGavitt, three pass receptions today for 113 yards altogether. Wonder if they're going to try another one of those uh, short kicks. And the Raiders recover. Uh oh, uh oh. Uh -oh. Little extracurricular uh -oh. activity now, here. There is no, there is no, there is absolutely no excuse for this. None whatsoever. Coaching staffs are out onto the field. I didn't see any penalty flags yet, but uh, I'm sure there's going to be something. Official timeout. All right, let's watch the replay on the. Uh... All right, the man is down. Now, if there that, was a uh, whistle. Look at this. See, there, that's where the penalty should have taken place. There appears that there is no flag on the play. So there's no penalty, and the ball is marked at the 44. And the crowd lets the official well, know. Well, they, they should, Bob. Uh, they, they've, called, they've called a very good game up until now. But that play there, it was too obvious. It was in full view of everybody. They should have thrown a penalty. Doesn't matter with a whistle. The, the ball was covered. The guy was on the ground with the ball. Oh, yeah, well, that's... All set. Riverview with the football. First and 10 at their own 45-yard line. Belisario keeps the football around the left side. Is in the clear at the 40 and finally brought down. They should not have called that an out-of-bounds play, really. Tackle made on the play by number 44, Chris Nichols. However, a penalty flag thrown near midfield. However, there is a flag on the last play. Back here at the 40. So the play stops at the 38-yard line. Personal foul against Frazier. I'm wondering if there's an ejection. Might have been. Might be. The one is walking off. It could be the one. He's pleading his case over there, Bob. He could be gone. There's the ejection. Well, we're still trying to get uh, a word. So the penalty is tacked on to the end of the play. A total of 15 yards. Penalty assessed now back. And Brian Salisbury might have been the one, Bob, that was ejected. So the Raiders have it at the 25-yard line. Ball on the 24. And it's a first and 10 for the Raiders at the 25. First down for Riverview at the 25. Heakins, left side. Heakins at the 20. And out of bounds at about the 14. Another flag. I'll tell you what. These officials ought to throw five or six of them out. Clearly out of bounds and five more red jerseys piled on. Ridiculous. See how many tackles are All right, are now watch here. this. Here, he's out of bounds. Now look at this. Look at this. Look at this. So half the distance puts it where? Well, they're going to put the ball probably at, at the, seven. the six or seven yard line. Another Raider first down. And uh, the Frazier Commodores have called a timeout. The entire team goes across the field to huddle around its coach. And so we do have uh, 
the timeout. By the way, we have a, a Riverview Raider pizza special Raider from Valtry's Pizza in Oakmont. Right now, you can get two large plain pizzas at only $9.99. There are no coupons to clip. You need only to call or to stop in. Again, two large plain pizzas for only $9.99. Valtry's Pizza at 848 Allegheny River Boulevard in Oakmont. You can call 828-1421. That's 828-1421. Valtry's Pizza, located in Oakland. Timeout has concluded. First and goal from the seven. So it's first and goal from the seven. Hekins. No, Balisario keeps the football. And he's, he's awfully he's close. Awfully close. Balisario right. Taking it down to He's Very inside the one-yard line. Being driven out of bounds by Chris Nichols. Chris Nichols again defensively makes the play. Here's the fake to Heakins and the keep by Balisario. The at the five the and doesn't make it. The knee went down in front of the goal line. So it's second and goal near the one. Actually, it's closer than that. Quarterback keeper. He's not in. Alessario keeping the ball. And yep, he is. is. So the Raiders score again, making it 40 to 15. 40 15. I don't know what the hesitation was. Well, he was buried underneath all those bodies. The officials couldn't see where he was. Boy, the field. Uh, oh, it's terrible. Kind of muddy down here where Balasario's got a kick. There's Zach Zrimsic coming into the uh, the huddle here. Now they're going to go for two or one. They don't need the two. No. But do you want to kick in the it's, slop or do you want to? It's wanna... pretty hard. It's pretty hard to Raiders take the ball and try to two. spot it. Got a new shirt in there. Uh, uh, Todd Pavlik, number 80. Here's Balasario keeping he's the football. Got, he's got the two. And he's in for the two. So Balisario adds to the Riverview cause and makes it 42 to 15. The Riverview Raiders are in the lead. So we'll be back. Continue after this. Boy, love those clean jerseys. Josh Nestor, number 70. Here's uh, Balisario back to kick. Balisario to kick. Number two is Brian Bandish. Number seven is uh, George McGavin. And the kick short taken at about the 24. Oh, brother. What a hit by Dan Shapurka on a block. Balisario today, three for five in passing for 73 yards and a touchdown. He himself has rushed nine times for 75 yards and one touchdown in his total between the two. A 148 yards, all-purpose yardage, and two touchdowns. First and 10 for Frazier at their 31. Inside handoff up to about the 35. George McGavitt carrying the McGavitt ball. McGavitt carry the football. Three or four, maybe four yards. And uh, could have been Zrimsik and uh, Fran Shulo on the tackle. And also Zach Trimsek in on the stop. Gain of uh, four on the play, second and six. Third quarter, and it's 42 to 15, Riverview. Mr. Ratone, the official there, wants to wipe off the football. Third 
fact is they're bringing another ball in. Abel looking to throw. Over the middle, this pass is caught near the 45. And the Raiders combine with Dujak, uh, Shulo, among others on Dan Shaporka. Zach Zrimsik also there. And a first down for Frazier at their own 46-yard line. What did they pick up on that? About uh, 15? 12, 15, yep. Abel will probably fill the air this afternoon with the footballs. Slips and slides. Abel slipping and falling on the play. Got up to about the 47-yard line. A gain of maybe two on the play. Second and eight. Uh, tackle made by Zach Zrimsik. Have got to give him credit. Second and nine. Man in motion, able to throw. Has completed the pass. Complete caught by Bandish, but it's short yardage. And they're up near the 50 defensively. Fritz Tamburo for the Raiders makes the play. It's third and five coming up. Short, uh, high percentage pass. Six minutes remaining in the third quarter. The Raiders leading at 42 to 15. Man in motion, and Abel is back. The rush is on, throws over the middle, and this one's incomplete. And uh, it was intended for George McGavitt. Covering was, or T.J. Skillen, rather, put the pressure on the quarterback, and back to punt is Abel. That's thrown behind him. Fourth down and five. George Abel going back to kick. Deep for the Raiders. Jack Looks like the Raiders only have about 10 men on the field. A fake punt. Forward. Almost intercepted. Almost so they tried the fake punt. The ball's wet. Not much grip on it. And if we can catch it on the replay, it's almost impossible to do anything with that ball. Abel try to get a grip on it. The ball is thrown short. But had the pass been completed, even with a man in a prone position, it would have been intercepted. I was going to say it would have been a first down. If he'd have caught it, but yeah. I think it would have been intercepted. Well, they ought to do here what uh, what Arab Parsegian did at the University of Pittsburgh some years ago. Let the clock run no matter what happens. First and ten now for the Raiders. Under six minutes to play, third quarter. Strong side right. Aikens carries the football. Aikens is picking up about seven yards. And uh, tackled on the play. Let's see, Josh. Uh, Josh Lynch Miller the makes the play after six yards. Second and four. Second and four. Ball on the 44. So they have it spotted at the Frazier 44. Here's Heakin straight up the middle. He's on his way again, but he's caught from behind at about the 30. Boy, those numbers are tough to see, but it appears Chris Nichols, number 44, was the tackler on that play. Could it be the reins have let up a little bit? Some of the umbrellas have come down. Hard to say. Taking the ball down to the 29. First and First 10. Down, rain, the, the rain has finally stopped. So it's marked at the 29 and the first and 10. Erdeljack at left half. Heakins at right. Heakins gets the call. Up the middle. 
Keegan carrying the ball and tackled by a whole And of after there. about uh, six or seven yards. Boy, it's tough picking up a number, but it looked to me. It looked like Bill Lynch. But I'm hearing another name. Uh, oh, okay. Brian Usher, 72. I thought it was 33. Gain of four, second and six. Four minutes remaining in the third quarter. Hakins goes in motion. It's Hurdle Jack getting the pitch. Looks for some blocking help. And is down to the 20. And uh, Tom Schoenfelder makes the play. And uh, Craig Pike, number 27, is also there. And the football at the 20 brings up a third and one. They've got to get to the 19. Forty-two, fifteen. Riverview in the lead. Hurdle Jack up the middle. Hurdle Jack takes the ball and gets the Raiders first, first down. down. Tackled by a whole host of uh, Commodores in the center there. And uh, Bill Lynch. football spotted at about the 18, also so he cleared it by about a yard or so. Bill Lynch spearheaded the defensive attack. The ball is actually marked at the 17. Ball on the 17, first down, Riverview. So from the 17, a fake to Ertel Jack and Heakins inside the five yard line. So the Raiders pick up another first down. Bill Lynch again defensively for Frazier. Nice uh, block by Theo Fikaris and Gene, uh, sorry, Steve Mitchell. Couple of nice blocks on that play that opened the hole. Two minutes now to play, third quarter. Belisario gives to Heakins. The head goes down. He's inside he the five, the down, to, the down to about the one-yard line. Up there by Randy Pellick. Randy Pellick making the defensive so play down for Frazier, number 55. So it's second and goal Ladies from about the one. Has been more good hot pizza ready, just delivered. You need to get your pizza right now at the concession stand. So hurry over, or it'll be all gone. Belisario with uh, two setbacks. Heakins gets the call. Heakins carrying the ball. No signal yet. Up by the center of the line. Touchdown. Now the signal is given, and the Raiders add on to the lead of 48 to 15. Do we have enough uh, ink and paper to keep up with this thing, huh? <laughs> well, they're going to go for the kick. Two-point play would give them 50. Hurdle Jack holding. Kick is good. And the kick is good. So the Raiders now lead it 49 to 15. We'll be back with more right after this. Here you see it exactly one minute to play in the third quarter. It's 49 to 15. Riverview leading the most points ever scored in a WPIAL playoff game. North Allegheny tallied 59 back in 1982. Here's uh, the ball picked up by Tom Schoenfelder. 
And Mike Catullo on the specialty teams. Another penalty flag thrown. And an official timeout. And we can see what happened uh, causing the penalty flag to be thrown. Still didn't see what happened. Unsportsmanlike. Yeah, well, that, that could be a, a multitude of things. Frazier out of the huddle first down first and about, about 25. 20. 25. Option play, and it looked like Erdeljack made the tackle on Dan Shapurka. Rich Walsh made the play. Okay, Rich Walsh on Shapurka. First quarter, uh, third quarter, rather winding down. So Rich Walsh. They probably won't get another playoff for inside. Well, it's seven seconds now and counting. So the third quarter will end with the score 49 to 15. That is the end of the first half. The score 49 to 15. It's hard to imagine, Joe, 59 points being scored in a playoff game, but uh, North Allegheny did it back in 1982, well, and it is a WPIAL record. That might go out to wind in this game. Well, the Raiders need uh, another touchdown. Well, they need two scores for sure. So we're about to start our fourth and final period. And the rains are coming down again. This has not been a pleasant day at Riverside Park. The for all the spectators or Frazier. That's right. <laughs> uh, the confines of Riverside Park have been more friendly on other days. Yeah. Even with the wind blowing, the sun's been out or what have you. But it was only a year ago that we were here for the miracle at the park and uh, next weekend when Riverview meets uh, whomever we might have a little bit of a replay from that year ago event I might have it in my library by the way so next weekend we might uh, show you that cap of the cap of pass I can still hear the words of, oh, no, what are they doing? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, what are they doing? Second and 24. <laughs> You're on, Joe. All right, here we go. Back, pass, up, good, and down goes the that fumble, and it's recovered by Frazier. They're going to recover the ball back inside. I think it's inside the five-yard line or right around the five. I thought his knee was done. He probably should have had better a better spot on the ball. Almost goes down right. See right now. Well, he's maybe just beyond not. the five. He, I don't think his knee ever did hit. There's a loose ball. It's going to go inside the five-yard line, and Frazier is going to cover it. Oh, look at the rains coming now. Oh, my goodness. Boy, it is really coming yeah. down now. It really is coming down. Hmm. Well, they are going to snap the ball, I think. From the end zone, long pass. It could be intercepted. Walsh was over there looking for the interception. I think the wind took that ball and just blew it out of bounds. Oh, my, is it coming down. Well, those officials, I don't know what they're being paid, but they're going to earn their money here this afternoon. May cost them that much to get dry. Well, they're going to kick. They're going to punt the football from the end zone. Oh, my goodness. Went straight up. The ball's going to hit down around the 10 or 15 yard line. 
Oh, my. Mark Monterotti, I think, was down there to cover that one. Oh, my. Look at this rain. Now and there's a whistle. You know, this game could be called, you know. I know. All right, here we go. It's uh, Riverview with the ball. And this, I'll tell you what, the weather here is just absolutely unbelievable. Into, well, a Belisario just goes right upfield with it for maybe five or six yards. And I'll tell you what, this, this looks like a hurricane here. My goodness. Look, can you see? Can you, well, look at our screen there. That's no kidding. That's not a problem. That is what's happening here at Riverside Park. We just lost one, we just lost one camera. Well, it didn't go overboard, but we lost the picture. <laughs> well, that's that's what I meant to say, Bob. I didn't think I didn't think they would believe that the thing flew into the river. Well, anyway, you'll have to bear with us. It's just uh, one of those afternoons that the weather is just so bad that Belisario just took another snap, and I think he just went on one knee. It's going to be third down and about four. We've got a uh, little less than nine and a half minutes remaining. We're going to have to stay with our ground camera for a while. My goodness, that. And touchdown. Well, we got a we got a touchdown there for the Raiders. Have no idea who it was. Can't see a thing. Balasario, Joe. Balasario, okay. Well, we've lost one camera in the replay. <laughs> and uh, the Raiders are at 55. Oh my, we'll just, well, we'll just, uh, I'm sure that the good people looking in will bear with us. I'm sure they understand what we're confronted with. We've lost a replay camera. Uh, we've lost uh, the camera up on the roof. When I say lost, I mean we lost the picture. And we're operating with the ground camera. And we still have nine minutes remaining in the game. The Frazier contingent is on the way out and there is Ertel Jack for two and he gets into the end zone. It's 57 to 15 and we'll be back right after this. And there is the kick. Uh, by the way, Riverview was penalized 15 yards for unsportsmanlike conduct. And they're going to spot the ball at about the 42-yard line. Dujak made the stop on uh, George McGavitt. So it's going to be a first down for Frazier at their own 42-yard line. We get 840 something to play. 840 huh? remaining in the ball game, and mercifully, this thing could be over shortly. <laughs> Abel. Oh, it looked as though Labo was going to hand off, but he kept it. He's going right down the middle, and he's going to finally be stopped at about the 32 yard line. And who made that stop? Tambura was in. On part of it, Erdeljack, I think, made the original hit. So the ball is going to be spotted. I think the ball is spotted at the 29. Bear with us, folks, on the picture. And right 
up the middle, and there's a fumble. Loose football. McGavitt had it. He lost it, and I think I think it was recovered by Frazier. They did uh, recover their own fumble. Walsh was there on the play. By the way, the young lady that you interviewed at halftime last week celebrates right. her Kristen. 16th birthday today. Well, I'll tell you, she's she's got a she's got a future. That that young lady, Bob. Believe me, she is. Uh, Fortunately, we don't have to worry about her because we're at the end. <laughs> I figured it out. By the time she's out of college, I'll be ready to hang them up anyway. And uh, I don't know how deep I'll be, but I'll be somewhere. <laughs> Dan Shaporka on the carry. Oh, my. <laughs> we got a third down and about six coming up. And this is one of those games where we can't see the numbers on the jerseys. Uh, we can now with a few of the uh, Riverview boys because a few of them came in and haven't had a chance to get their jersey dirty yet. Uh, Frazier completely out of action. We can't see a thing here except number two who's on the near side of the field here and he just went into the game. And there's, uh, is that, is that Abel, Greg Abel? Yep, Shane Felder. Shane Felder, okay, and Shulo makes the stop for the Raiders. And we're down to six minutes and 20 seconds remaining. First and 10 for the Raiders. And they're working feverishly to try to get the other camera. And understand, Bob, they, uh, if uh, if uh, the Raiders should uh, score another touchdown, which mercifully they won't because they don't have the ball. There's only six minutes left. There's a handoff. And going up to about the 10-yard line. Shane Felder carried, and he is going to be stopped at about the 10 yard line or thereabouts. And uh, they're going to be in first down territory. And uh, is it first and goal, or do they have a little bit more than 10 yards to go to the goal? Yeah, they do. That's not first and goal just yet. So it's first and 10. They're at about the 12 or 13 yard line. They almost fumbled that one, and uh, Abel held on to it, and finally is going to be hit and dropped. So Abel did all he could to hold on to the football. It was quite slippery, and T.J. Skillen led the uh, defense there for the Raiders and made the stop. Five minutes remaining. Abel is ready. I'm sure they'd like to get into that end zone and hand off right up the middle. Third down and about seven. Third and seven. The ball is at about the... Uh, oh, about the nine, about the nine-yard line. We're looking at about 4:20 remaining in the game. There's a handoff and going down near the end zone and into the end zone for the touchdown. So Frazier gets into the end zone and a flag in the end zone. And I'll tell you what, the officials uh, have their hands full here. Not that. Uh, it's, it seems like after every play, there's uh, some extracurricular activity going on out there. And the penalty, I think, is going to go against Frazier. I think it's one of those, uh, well, the, the touchdown does count, I'm sure. Needless to say, this is going to be a very, very fast wrap-up because the escape hatch is open. <laughs> Where in the world did they put the ball? The 20? Uh, well, they, mar they marched off 18, 15 yards. The 18. 
Well, I'm uh, I'm sure that this is the uh, this is the uh, two point effort here following the touchdown, or is it? I think the center wants another ball. Tell you what, give credit to the young cameraman down there who's. Uh, yeah. John Robinson holding it. John Robinson, I'll tell you what, I don't know. In your pay in your envelope when you get your paycheck, there could be there could be a, a medal in there. There's the there is the shovel pass, and this, this is not going anywhere this time. And the tackle is gonna be made by number eighty-nine for the uh, Raiders. That's Mike Catula. Joe, we owe for another break. All right, let's take a break, and we'll be back with the final four minutes and 11 seconds right after this. Well, here's uh, Frazier all huddled up and an onside kick, and it's going to be covered by the Riverview. Look at him. Look at him battling. Look at him battling. Look, look at this. This is absolutely unbelievable. The officials ought to do more than just call penalties. If they can, this is get this is getting out of hand. This is getting out of hand, and everybody is out there. The coaching staff, the players on the bench, do not dare move as Coach Kappa is just telling them all to get back to the bench. And uh, believe me, when uh, Kappa speaks, they listen. But uh, the game sort of gotten out of, uh, it had gotten out of hand when uh, Riverview took a commanding lead. And I'm not blaming everything on Frazier, of course, but then again, uh, you know, when you're on the short end, frustration sets in and the results have been pretty obvious and pretty evident here for the last couple of quarters. I don't know what the officials are going to decide but the game is out of reach tell you what I wouldn't be a bit surprised if uh, they just didn't throw their arms up and just call this one before somebody gets hurt how much time is there left? really isn't that much well there's four minutes remaining 401 to be exact and there is a conference This, this game could be over. They're talking to Coach Kappa now, the, the uh, Bob Mervis. Boy, they really had their hands full. They called a good game until uh, frustration set in on the part of Frazier. Now what do they do? Now they're going over to talk with the uh, Frazier coach. I think they're going home. They're going home. It's over. It's over. And I'll tell you what, a good, good decision with by Bob Mervis and the coaches. Someone was going to get hurt and were tickled pink that they've called the game. Bob? All right, Joe, the final is there, 57 to 21. And I don't know what, uh, how much time is actually left. I can't see the clock. A little bit under. With 3.35 to play, with 3.35 to play, the game is over, and the Raiders have advanced. The Raiders have advanced and will play the winner of the Manesson duquesne game next weekend. And uh, needless to say that the next time these two teams meet, both teams will have reason to say would like to get even. Milo? Well, it appears that the entire team from the word we've got here has been ejected. If, if that's what it is. All right, gentlemen, start your clocks. Two and a half minutes. We'll call it a night. And from what, and from what we understand, the Raiders have to stay on the field until the rest of the clock runs out. So we'll uh, do the second half scoring. Uh, McGavitt on a 49-yard pass from Abel. Uh, for Frazier, the two points uh, failed, and Riverview led it 34 to 15. And then the Raiders piled it on. Belisario, a one-yard run and a two-point conversion, 42 to 15. Heakins, a two-yard run. Belisario's kick, 49 to 15. 
Belisario a three-yard run. Erdeljack ran it in for two points, 57 to 15. Shayna Felter with his 10-yard run here at the end, 57-21. The Raiders fall two points short of the WPIL record for most points in a playoff game, which was 59. Uh, statistically, Greg Abel with six out of 22 for 186 yards. Brian Bandish cut uh, four of those for 41. McGavitt cut four passes for 109. Shaporka two for 20. Eric Carrow was one for 16. Orlando Belisario was three for five, 73 yards. And he had 82 yards rushing. Also a big uh, rushing day for Damian Heekins, 14 carries, 98 yards. Tamburo, three carries, 25. Erdeljack, four carries, 42. Erdeljack caught one pass for 42. Bonarotti caught one for 21. And uh, Zrimzek caught one for 10. And uh, the penalties got out of hand there, obviously. And uh, <laughs> and that was pretty much the end of it, is uh, the field got so bad that nobody could even stand up on it. And Frazier was totally frustrated. And uh, really, in all honesty, their coaches didn't do a very good job of uh, controlling their bench. And I thought Jake Kappa did an excellent job. And there it is, as uh, Howard Cosell once said, down goes Frazier, 57 to 21. <laughs> From here on in, all the games will be played on neutral fields. So on behalf of Joe Falsetti, Mike Pavlik, and the entire Comcast crew, I'm Bob Tattern thanking you for joining us. And again, our final was Riverview 57 and Frazier 21. So long, everybody.